One of the things my daughter requested for her Arctic animal birthday party was a large igloo that she and her friends could sit in, and I was more than happy to create one. To see some of the other things I made for her party, like the pinata or the cake, check out the description. But this is She's Making Something, and in this video, I'm making a kid-sized cardboard igloo. So my basic igloo shape is an octagon, which has eight sides. So I grabbed four large boxes from Walmart, each 24 by 16 by 19 inches. And I'm gonna cut each box in half, creating eight equal pieces. I cut one corner of the box and then cut the opposite corner. So each piece has one of the bigger sides and one of the smaller sides. The larger rectangles are the base, and the smaller rectangles are the second layer of my igloo. I'm going to use the side flaps to connect all the pieces together, but I only need one flap, so I cut the other side off. But I don't throw it away, because I'm going to use it later. I want the second layer of my igloo to curve inward, meaning it has to be smaller at the top than the bottom. So I cut off both side flaps of the smaller rectangle. Again, I don't throw these away. I am using only these original four boxes to make the entire igloo, no extra cardboard needed, and most of these side flaps are used later. Once I have removed all the flaps, I'm left with a shape that looks like this, but that top piece needs to be even smaller along that very top edge, and I need some sort of flap to connect them together, so I'm scoring a diagonal line across the corner which just means that I use the box cutter to cut through just one layer of the cardboard instead of the whole thing, which makes it easier to bend exactly where I want it to. I made myself a template so I know all my pieces will still be exactly the same. I am choosing to score the corner that is opposite of the side flap I left connected at the bottom. So this way all the connecting pieces are not on the same side, which hopefully makes my entire igloo more stable. Now that I have all eight pieces, the size and shape that I want, it is time for the simple part of taping them all together. Starting with the base, which was the bigger rectangle, and the one flap I didn't remove, I just layer and tape, and layer and tape, lining up the natural crease in the box flap with the edge of the next piece underneath it. And once all eight are connected, forming a rough circle, I can stand it upright and tape the outside edges of my pieces together forcing it to lock into the more solid octagon shape. So I'm using masking tape on the outside of my igloo because I originally thought I was going to paint it and I prefer to paint over masking tape instead of packing tape or duct tape. But I scratched that idea when I saw how big it was and I just end up using all of the tapes in the end. Whatever works to help hold it together better is the best option. And I have a base. It's a pretty cool little fort, but I want an igloo, which is more of a dome shape, so it's time to connect the second layer. I have to fold in all the triangles that I scored and then tape all of those together. I was lazy and cheated by not cutting these pieces on a diagonal on the other side too. If I had, then they would fit together a little more nicely, and I do that on the third layer, but this layer fits together fine, it just has a slightly twisted look because I left one side of the pieces straight. Before I added the final layer to close it in a little more, I cut the door opening so I can get into the igloo more easily, which comes in handy when trying to tape on the top. I chose one of the octagon sides for my door but didn't cut it away completely because I didn't want to lose the stability that the corners give, so I cut my opening two to three inches from the edge and gave it some beveled corners to help keep that illusion of the well-known round igloo shape. After the door was out, I also took a moment to cut some small rectangular windows. The final layer of my igloo is made using the smaller 16 inch side flaps that I cut off at the very beginning. Again, I want this layer to close in even more, and so the top edge needs to be smaller than the bottom edge. In my case, the top edge starts at 11 inches and the bottom edge is 14 inches, and then I cut a diagonal line to connect them. Then I do the same thing of scoring a triangle shape on the other side 
to create a flap to connect the pieces together and repeat this until I have eight pieces. And then layer and tape and layer and tape forming a rough circle just like the base and then going around again securing everything to form an octagonal donut which I am literally just going to plop on top of my igloo lining up the corners and then tape it into place. The dome is now complete with a purposeful hole in the top for airflow. The last thing I need to construct is the tunnel extending out from the opening. And I start with the door that I cut out to be the top of my tunnel because I know it's the exact width of my opening. And I'm using the longer 24 inch side flaps that I cut off the base to make the sides of my tunnel. I tape two flaps together to make my tunnel a little longer and then cut my door piece to be the same length. Because I beveled my doorway, the side flaps are a little too tall, but by scoring a line at the same height of the outside corner and then scoring the top piece at the same places as the inside corners, they all bend at the exact right places to fit nice and snug in the opening. And the structure of the igloo is complete. It actually looks like a decent enough igloo with enough holes and openings for adequate airflow, enough room inside for three to four kids to sit comfortably, and it's just tall enough that if my daughter stands up, only her head pokes out the top. It's exactly what she specified for her birthday party and I'm happy. It just doesn't look very much like ice and snow. So I am going to cover the whole thing in this white banner paper using a mixture of glue and water. I cut the banner paper into smaller strips so it's easier to manage. And after slathering the cardboard in my homemade Mod Podge, I simply place the paper on top and smooth it down with my hand to help it connect with the glue. And then by some science magic of liquid adhesion, it'll stay in place and not slide off as it dries. I can reposition it as long as the glue is still wet but once it dries, it stiffens up and adheres to the cardboard really well. I started off by covering the whole area in the glue mixture, but after a few panels, I realized I could just glue down the edges of the paper and it helped move things a lot faster and waste less glue. I covered the entire outside, but left the inside alone, except for wrapping around the edge of the tunnel opening and also the edges of my little window cutouts. I let the igloo sit overnight to make sure the glue was completely dry before I moved on to painting the ice block lines. I chose to use blue instead of black or gray because it helped coordinate with the party colors better and I think helps it look like cold snowy ice blocks instead of the cement cinder blocks that my school walls were made of growing up. After painting all the lines, the igloo's finally finished and ready for the party. It's a little messy, and if you have any tips on how to make it look a little tidier, please let me know in the comments. But it did last the whole week until the party, even with all my kids crawling in and out of it and playing peekaboo with the baby through the windows. It was also a big hit during my daughter's birthday party. If you made an igloo, hit the like button to let me know. And to see some of the other things I made for her Arctic animal party, check out the description or visit my channel to see all the birthday party videos. Don't forget to subscribe to get notified the next time I'm making something. Thanks for watching.